everyone. I am here with your Bible reading. Today is going to be a sad and happy reading. We are going to start with the death of Jesus, but we're going to stop with the resurrection of Jesus. So if you'd like to follow along with me today, we'll be reading... I have stickers under my fingernails. What the heck? be reading Luke chapter 23 verse 44 through chapter 24 verse 12. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. And then to make sure he was dead, they took a spear and jabbed it into his side, and blood and water came out. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. And some of the women they're talking about would be Mary, Jesus' mother, Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and probably Martha, They were all followers of Jesus and all very good friends. Can you imagine? Just for Mary, the mother of Jesus, can you imagine seeing your child go through what Jesus went through? People spitting on him and beating him and mocking him, flogging him, hitting him in the head, putting a big thick thorns shaped in the crown on his smashing it on his head, blood pouring down his face, and then when he's on the cross, it still doesn't stop. They try to feed him wine vinegar to drink, and they cast lots for his clothes. They mock him the whole time he's on the cross. Mary had to be crying so hard. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had been laid yet because that was Joseph's tomb that he actually had bought for himself had it cut into the rock so it was brand new but he gave it to Jesus to be buried in now wasn't that a nice nice thing it was preparation day and the Sabbath was about to begin the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience with the commandment. Now we're back to the good. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning, angels, stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. 
Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven. Because remember, remember, there was twelve disciples. Now there's eleven. Because Judas, who betrayed Jesus, hung himself. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, which was Jesus' mother, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. That's where we're going to stop today, but later they find out what happens. And actually, one of Jesus' disciples, when he was told this, he is not going to believe it unless he puts his hands in Jesus' wounds and fills them for himself. And then when he sees Jesus, Jesus already knows he said this, of course, because Jesus knows everything. And Jesus told him, go ahead, put your fingers in. Can you imagine how shocked they would have been to see that? Some people don't believe till they see. imagine the face when Jesus walked in. <laughs> Psalm 99 today. The Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity in Jacob. You have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Moses and Aaron were brothers, by the way. They were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God, though you punished their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Now Aaron, when Moses died, Aaron, he was the, became priest over all of Israel. Israel, I can't talk today, I'm sorry. And Aaron's sons as well. But Aaron's sons were not so nice. They were not so good. And they'd done bad things. They were not holy. So a woman, Hannah, she prayed to God for a child. She was barren. She prayed and prayed to God for a child. And she told God if he gave her a child, she would give that child back to him. So God blessed Hannah with a son. She named him Samuel. And Samuel was a very good boy. And when he was weaned, so he was probably about three, maybe, she took him to Aaron and gave him to Aaron to be raised you know, by Aaron to God. She gave him back to God. And God blessed Hannah with other children. But Samuel became a very good man, very good man. And Aaron's sons were not. So Samuel became priest after Aaron. God loves Samuel. Samuel was a good man. Hannah done what she said. She gave him back to God. You know how hard that would have been to want a child all that, all those years, and God bless you with one, and then as soon as you get him weaned, he's still a, just a little baby, pretty much, and you give him back. You give him over to the priest, you give him over to God for his whole life. She would come up and visit every now and, you know, then, and bring him like a coat and stuff. But that's not like having your child, you know, with you every day. She stuck to her word, and then God blessed her with other children. Psalm 
disintegrate. But it's been so hard to. Okay, we're going to end today with Proverbs chapter 14, verses 9 and 10. Fools mock at making amends for sin, but goodwill is found among the upright. Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can share its joy. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Let's get out our prayer list. I don't know if you guys wrote it down or not, but I've got the list here. Okay, please keep these three people in your prayers because these three people all have cancer. And I know two of them, Zach Kirby and Judy Osborne, I have been told have stage four cancer. Zach has two little kids, two little daughters, and a fiance, and he's only in his 30s, and he's dying. And Judy Osborne, I heard she's stage four as well. And Judy and I were very, very good friends. We talk to each other on Facebook now and then. Um, my sister actually has two kids by Judy's youngest son. So our families are connected. And Judy Thompson, our good friend that used to live here in the building with us, we still talk. She's very sick. They found cancer in her esophagus, but now she's also got to have stents in her heart. She's got several more scopes coming up because she's also they also found an ulcer. So she's not doing well at all, and she's an elderly lady. Okay. My sister Shelly made it home from the hospital from back surgery. She's doing well. Please keep Michael Cairns in your prayers. He's got Crohn's disease, so he's always sick. He's got a chronic illness. And please pray for him to get help paying that $4,000 bill for his infusions. Because I'm afraid if he don't get that paid somehow, that they might not let him have any more infusions. Because the same thing happened kind of like with my cousin. The doctor sent him up to Circleville to have blood work done. I don't know why he sent him all the way up there, but he did. And he went there to have the blood work done, but they wouldn't let him do it because they said, you still owe this other doctor $800 for the tests that they done. They wouldn't even let him have the blood work. Okay, please keep my stepmom Barb Post in your prayers. Cindy Welsh, Dora Carper. Dora Carper, my aunt, is supposed to go tomorrow to get the x-rays done. Remember, she's got one of those hips that were recalled, and they told her it would be okay, so she didn't do nothing about it. But well, now, these months later, she has an excruciating pain. She's walking with a walker, and she don't have to use any of that stuff. She's in good shape, and but she's doing, she has to walk with a walker now. She's having pain, severe pain in her pelvis, her back, her hip. It, it's awful. She's in severe pain. Linda Thacker, April Thacker, Luke Boggs, Elizabeth Jeffries, Sherman Crabtree, Abby Myers, my sister Melly Stanley and Eric Stanley. Um, they're having a lot of marriage trouble, so please keep them in your prayers for that. Okay, guys, that is everything for today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and a great week ahead. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again soon with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.